Chaya, hi. Um, two gitties in a row. Hi, Britt. Nice to see you. Burn bombs. Hey, Malky's here. Okay, hi, Hani. Um, Malky, all you have to do is um, request to join. Here we go. Waiting for Malky's media. Ah, hello. I'm oh, here. How are you? Since the last time we spoke, nothing has changed. Same. <laughs> like I say. Sorry, same. I can't hear you. You're breaking up a bit. I like to say we're all in stable condition. All is good. Awesome. It's so nice to meet you face to face. Same here. Okay, my 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 sunglasses are getting cut off. This is not good. It's this I guess special my sunglasses. I put them off because they're so you know, it goes <laughs> out but and it only gives me a two inch space here. It's not fair. I All know. Right. Especially because it's not so sunny anymore at this time of the night. So hello. Hi. Um so, should we get right into things? What do you think? Let's, let's do it. I'll tell you why. Because when it's going to go live, I mean, when, you, when you're going to save the live, when people get on it, they don't want to do a five, ten minute wait in the beginning, like what we're doing now, waiting for people to get on, right? Nope. So, we just, we go for it. Let's jump right in. So, um, I want to hear a little bit about you. I'm okay. Sure to do. Like about... Because, like, you seem to have, like, a lot of different things that you do. So, can you give a little background about sure. what you do? Okay. Okay. So, let me let me stop. My name, my name is Malky Weingarten. I live in Bar Park, Brooklyn. Um, I have a beautiful family um, of a bunch of girls and boys. Whatever. It doesn't matter how many. <laughs> I love count anyway. So, um, I do a lot of <laughs> Because um, I, I'm, a, I'm a gym teacher, I'm an aerobics instructor, I teach dance, I teach chasana dance, colors. I do uh, uh, oil painting, I do, I'm a lifeguard trainer. Oh, um, I didn't know about the painting. Yes, yes, yes. Basically, it's, Wait, it's a lifeguard brain. too? Yes, of course. It's an artist's brain. Whatever we can get our hands on, we go for. <laughs> Play some instruments, you know, that kind of a thing. So, um... Really, I want instruments. I want to hear. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So basically, the 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 thing that most people know me um, know me as right now, specifically because I'm very into that right now, are my movies. So I'm a director. You're a, a lot of hearts over here. Aww. Lots of love. I feel <laughs> them right here. Thank you. <laughs> Um, basically, she deserves everything. Aw. Hot. Aw. And they're colorful. So nice. You know what's cute is that when the hearts come up for a tiny second, you see a face. I keep trying to grab. Do you see the faces? Some are Sometimes, coming up. But wow, I I've never seen so many hearts in my life. Lots of love. Wow, that's so nice. Thank you. Lots of love. What's her name said? Okay, that's nice. So basically, I do movies. Um, my movies are for women only, even though every now and then, you know, I'll have someone admit that they watch my movies and they're not female. And, um, you know, they say they watched it because they walked into their kids' room while their kids were watching it. or they. But basically, I cater to women only. It says on it, for women only. So if there's any guys watching it, it's your business. Plus, there's nothing too exciting on my movies. They're all kosher. No bad language. <laughs> no romance. Boring. Boring. You know, for men so, that are looking. So, so is yeah. it, is, I have, actually haven't seen. I need to. I need to check it out. I haven't seen any of your movies, but uh, you, you've you've done multiple, right? It's a series. 
Yes. So I did, uh, right now there are three movies that are in the stores being sold. There's one that's heading into the stores for Sukkis. And there's one that's being edited right now that was shot this winter. And I am now writing my next script. Oh my goodness. So I'm up to, I'm up to movie number six. Movie number six. Yes. So are they available online? Like, could I see them online yes. or do I have to yes. like, go to a store? My distributor, um, Niggin, NigginMusic.com, Niggin with just one G, N-I-G-U-N, um, they have it available for download. Okay. I'm going to check it out because I'm just, I like, I love, and they're comedy, right? So they're, they're emotional. We call them dramedy because there's drama, drama and comedy. Um, we insert the comedy because I feel like if I'm not going to make people laugh, what, what am I worth, you know? <laughs> of course, um, that's what it's all about. Right. Um, but there are also beautiful life lessons and um, just very down to earth and topics that people can relate to. So, for example? So, um, Molly is my first movie. There's a series of three. Molly 1, Molly 2, and Molly 3, and that is about a girl who has Asperger's and how the community takes to her um, and how they treat her um, and how, she's, how, how she survives, um, you know, in the community. So it's a beautiful, touching story. Yeah, a lot of people were able to relate to that because I know everybody has, uh, you know, if they don't have relatives or somebody that they know that has special needs. So it was, it was for everybody. Wow. I, I want to see it. Uh, maybe I'll watch it after this. Um, uh, kids are loving it because I make sure that it's kosher enough so that it's good for kids. But really, I, I make it, I do it for adults. Um, so, yeah. Now, wow. if you watch a lot of secular movies, uh, I, I can't say that I can compete, even though I've been told that they're so professional and I've gotten feedback from people that I know watch secular movies um, that that it was so amazing and they were shocked because they didn't think a performance or that was, you know, uh, from on from standards can be so professional. So that was very flattering to me to hear. But, you know, my budget doesn't compare to Time Warner or uh, Disney or I don't know who else is doing the other movies out there. You know, you know, you can see how much I know about about but movies I'm sure out there. Your talent far ex exceeds uh, any of uh -huh. their Thank you. Good vibes I, my, coming my, from your account. <laughs> yeah. They um, are. Which uh, kind of brings us to the next. So, wait. So, did we cover all of your, like, hobbies, talents? Um, I think so. Yeah. So yeah. off. Okay. Um, so... What I found really spectacular about your account is the authenticity and the, um, like a lot of times you'll kind of just let out your soul. And I really found that very, I mean, I know a lot of people do that. Um, you know, maybe some people do it to get followers. It didn't seem like, that was like a grab for followers. It really felt like you were trying to share to bring good into the world. And I really was impressed with that. Um, so for anyone who hasn't seen those, you like to eyebrow dance? My oh, eyebrow or... dance. You see this? Wait, who? Which? Becca or Maki? Oh, Mom, you can see it. Hey, hey! I'm so <laughs> sister! <laughs> So let me show you what my eyebrows do. When I talk, I'm so full of expression. I get so excited. And I don't know what to do with myself. My eyebrows are going up. They're going down. They're talking. They're all excited. <laughs> it's the dancing eyebrows. Oh, so I got to practice. Yes. Am I, am I getting there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do this for 15 minutes now. <laughs> Um, well, actually, uh, this morning we were talking to, uh, um, I was talking to Shira Jacobson from the Shira show. She said that 
it's very therapeutic to laugh for 10 minutes a day, but it doesn't have to be straight. So we could give you like a few eyebrows, like in the beginning right. and maybe at the end, you know. Exactly. And if it makes you laugh, I'll even do it some more. It's not so fun, <laughs> but if it makes you laugh, you're desperate. I'll do as much as I have to do with my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so can you talk a little bit about your the stories, like where you like really share um sure absolutely okay for starters yeah. let me take my jacket off i didn't get to do that hold on now you're gonna see the ceiling for a second hi shana hi okay. leah so yes so what 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 part of my story would you like to hear i have to probably there was some really good ones Okay, aside from, like, the fun ones, like, I love the fun ones. Like, your rollerblading ones were great. Loved it. What, the, what are you talking about? Are you talking about my stories? My stories? Your I don't stories. know which you're Like, your to. Instagram stories. All oh, those stories. I thought the story of my life. Oh, I want to hear about the story of your life. <laughs> How much time we got? I don't know, an hour. <laughs> so, um, um, I don't know which stories you're referring to, so you have to be more specific. Okay, well, the rollerblading story was really fun, but oh. I was talking about kind of, you sh you seem to share a little bit, like, you know, you share about mental health a lot, and you, you give, like, chizuk strength to to people, and I think that that's really special and um, and unique, because it seems to be coming from a very, like, genuine place, and, and, um, right. And so uh, maybe actually you kind of sharing a little bit about your your personal story might help. Right. Okay, so see where it's coming from. Right. Okay. So um I'll just bring make it a little personal. Um specifically has it how it's related to me. I have people constantly saying, How are you always so happy? And is it possible that you're always so happy? Where do you get all that energy from? So energy I have. I'm not always happy. I'm mostly positive. I'm, I'm a positive person. I believe it has a lot to do with the fact that um, my nature is is this way. But there are days and there are times where I wake up and I don't want to do anything. <sighs> I just wake up and I say, um, "Okay, I'm not. I'm not doing today. Not kids. Not work." Not not going out, not getting on Instagram, nothing. I just don't feel like it. And What's I, that squeaking? So it's got it's moving. Oh no, it, I hear a squeaking. Oh, a squeaking. I don't know what the squeaking is. It is an air condition going? Let me see if I can move oh. that. Um, or stop it, or close it, so that there's less noise. Um, but, hold on, hold on. Ah, uh, okay, less noise now. Practicing okay. my eyebrows while you do that. Okay. <laughs> it's a fun <laughs> game, it's a fun game. So, basically, I like people to know that, that I, I am more than human. And so, on days when I'm feeling blah, People normally wouldn't get on Instagram because on Instagram, you only make a happy face and you're only supposed to be happy on Instagram. I will purposely get onto Instagram and I will tell everybody I'm not liking today and I'm not happy today and I am not feeling like doing anything today. And then I'll crack up about it or I'll smile about it. But really, I want people to know that it's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to not be okay. And and then and then of course there are things that you could do about it, but we can go we can go into that. Um, I think what we discussed um, was that we wanted to we wanted to talk about my filmmaking. Can you hear me? Yeah, it just keeps squeaking. Something's squeaking. There's no mice here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it seems like everyone likes the squeaking. We just got some hearts, so keep going. <laughs> I don't know where it's coming from. I think it's from maybe from the mic. I'm not sure what it is. So I'm going oh, to maybe. try. Yeah. Um, so I think what we said we wanted to talk about was how 
how what I do affects how I feel, maybe? Could we go there? Yeah. Talking, talking about my filmmaking and, um, uh, you know, how that works for me. So basically I've had, I've had, I've had, um, a lot of opposition to my filmmaking, um, in, in many different ways. For starters, when I, when I wrote my first script, I was told it's not a good story for a movie. It just isn't. I was also told that I'm not going to make my money back. It's too expensive. Malky, you're going to lose money. Don't do it. Um, and I, I, I went for it because my gut told me, no, this is an amazing story. I'm doing this. And so I got, I got the money together and I, I pulled it through. And so after that, I realized, you know what? There's something to my gut. I'm going to trust my gut. Um, then, you know, I was told by, uh, is it, uh, I shouldn't even be saying this on Instagram, but whoever is watching this on Instagram, if you have Instagram, then you're in the same boat as I am, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're even, we're even Stephen. Uh, but I was told by my daughter's schools, because my daughters go to Hasidish schools, um, that they're not okay with me performing, they're not okay with me doing these movies, even though my biggest clientele are their students, because the Hasidish girls are the ones that are watching my movies, mostly. I have girls from all over the world, not necessarily Hasidish, but because Hasidim try, the ones who are true Hasidim, try to be careful with what they're watching, my films are a great alternative, and so they're a huge, they're a big chunk of my, of my viewers. Um, but nonetheless, the idea that someone is a filmmaker, and I understand the concept. What, they're, what they didn't like was the idea that um, girls would, were going to try and emulate it and want to be stars. And they're training their girls, and we, we're training our girls. And I, I run a Hasidish home too. My kids go to Hasidish school. So I get the concept, which is, you're going to, you know, raise a beautiful home and it's not about being a star. That's not what it's about. And that's not what Hashem wants from us, et cetera. So um, that's the philosophy by the Hasidim. So yeah. And that a woman's place is in the home. It's not sad. It's not sad because it's sad for you. You're getting no, sad. It's sad. it's sad if you're step Like I'm also very creative and, and kind of want to do, and I think, I would feel very squashed if I couldn't express myself in a, in a big way. Right. So I definitely felt that, but when people want to try and understand that, I explain that this is the Hasidish philosophy. They take it. It's not, it's nothing to do with halacha. It's, uh, it's just, uh, an extra boundary of, um, we want our girls to understand the concept of, um, you know, a girl, a woman doesn't belong on stage. All these concepts, I understand. Wait a what minute. You know? I went to Beis Yaakov. Beis Yaakov is different. Time I'm saying that today. Yeah, Beis Yaakov is different. I'm talking about the Hasidish schools, the real Hasidish okay. schools. Yes, Hasidish is the, is the key word here. Okay. Yeah, so I got a position, and so I had to lie low, and I'm still trying to lie low. Can you tell? <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> so, um, so anyone on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, so, <laughs> so anyway, but I decided that, you know what? I know what I need, and I need to be fulfilling what I feel like I was put down here to do. And I feel like if, if my movies are successful, and I'm creating, um, I'm, I'm creating um, material for our girls to watch that are clean and that are kosher, and my eyebrows are talking full of expression, then for sure this is what Hashem wants me to do, and if this is what Hashem wants me to do, I'm going to do it. And it was hard for me in the beginning because I had to, you know, I was worried about what people were going to say and what they were going to do, and if I was going to get into trouble and not get into trouble. And But now I'm just like, Look, Hashem, I'm doing this for you because money, it doesn't so much make. <laughs> so this has got to be, this has got to be me um, needing to fulfill what you want me to do, Hashem. You gave me this creativity. If I don't use it, 
I am so, so not happy. And so I need to use my creativity, which means that if I'm doing this for our community, and obviously, like I said, it's not because of money, um, then I feel like, you know, Hashem wants this and I am perfectly comfortable with it. Um, so it, I came to terms with it. Wow. There. I, by the way, I just want to clarify, I didn't mean to come off sounding judgy. Because I think that it's really important for everyone there are to so, kind of there are so um, many find their own, you know. That, that yeah, I know has. there are so many. I'm telling you that there are so many people that would feel like what you feel, which is like I, I am, I like you feel squished. You're feeling because squished for them. Don't know the difference. Some of them really do, and some of, you know, like I, I feel like, I feel like sometimes like if 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 a, someone doesn't have an outlet, then they could, they might be, they might do something that's totally fine, but feel like a rebel. Exactly. But they're not rebellious. They're just. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that's what kind of where, where I was coming from. It's not to judge anybody because I. Right. No, no, no. I knew, I knew yeah, what yeah. you meant. I knew yeah. exactly what you meant. Um, I didn't think you were being, um, you know, judging like sure. that. I, I know because there are people that when they hear this, they say, I, I, it's terrible. And I, I, I explain, and that, and if I sometimes I go to communities where I feel like, wow, everyone seems so limited, so squished, so squashed, I can't breathe thinking about it. But I know very well that these women are fine. They're happy. They're okay. They want this. This is the life they, they've chosen for themselves. So I have to stop projecting what would make me hyperventilate and feel like I can't breathe yes. is not the same for them. Right. They're used to this. They've accepted this. They're enjoying this. They love this. They want this. They were raised with this. Their mothers did this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So anyway. Um, we have like a private question. How? Oh, um, somebody asked, how is your family with this whole thing? So my kids sometimes love it, sometimes hate it. They hate it when I'm not home, when I'm filming. They love it when, you know, people come over to them and tell them, your mother this and your mother that, and I love the movie, and what's your mother making? Or sometimes they get annoyed because there's a million questions that, A, they can't answer, and B, I don't let them answer. <laughs> like, what's going to be the content of the next movie? I'm sometimes not ready to say it yet. Um, so they sometimes love it, and they sometimes hate it. But mostly, um, I'm home, you know, except for when I'm filming. I can do editing on my own at home. So it's just the filming process, which is about two months where I'm totally out to lunch. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Love this perspective. Never thought of it that way. That's crazy. says this. Um, wow. So, okay. So, so let's, let's um, continue with the story. So you got put, you followed your gut which I think is incredible. Um, how, and, and you produced your first movie and then what happened? Like what was so, the feedback? Like the naysayers, like how, like how was it, how did it all pan out after? So the second, the first time around, I had to really work hard to get sponsors and to get people to help me um, because no one was, was so hopeful. Um, second time around, I was much lucky. It was much easier because they saw that the first one was successful. So the second one was easier to pull together. Um, hi, Figgy W. Um, and, um, from there, it's just been, it's just been a roll. And I feel, I feel like, um, it, it's just, it's moving practically on its own. And some of the times the the process of pulling together the movie should have been much harder and I should have had a harder time getting actresses, I should have had a harder time getting locations and, and it's just happening and I know that it's because Hashem wants this to happen and I seriously see it, I see the way um, things just fall into my lap or um, uh, things weren't supposed to happen and they just happened and I know it's because Hashem's saying, I got you I want you to do this. So I'm taking mm -hmm. care of this. I got the back. Um, 
so it reminds me a lot of i don't know if anyone is in, in that the kol isha group on facebook are you part of that one? on facebook there's this kol isha group and it's a bunch of women it's like i think there's like six thousand people in that group now and it's like such incredible female talent out there where they've found a place to express themselves in a in a very um safe way and it it's it's bringing people fulfillment in a way that that wasn't previously um accessible wow and I think I think that it's so important. I mean, I know maybe in not, in some communities it's not, but like for uh, I, I really, I mean, we've had a lot of psychologists speak on um, on Project Proactive, and there it seems like for for you at least, it, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it it feels like like it's you're able to do self care while you're working. <laughs> and um like it just seems like you're just you're using all your cojos for it's it's it must feel so therapeutic to be able to use your cojos in a way that um is elevating and uplifting other people and uplifting yourself i, I don't know right so that's it's it's a great point that you're that i, I will I, I will need to I, I'm going to address that, but I'm also going to say one little thing for. I do. Oh, wait, you cut out. Our... Don't say anything yet. Sorry. Sorry, got cut off for okay. a second. I think okay. that all the things that I do are passions because thankfully I, I, I'm, I'm in a place where I don't, I don't rely on the, the financial part of these passions to keep me afloat and to pay my rent. So um, I'm in a position where I don't have things that I do what I am doing on the specific um, now, The audio is cutting, cutting out. What? Could you, say, could you say that again? The audio cut out for a second. Um, so one second. I just don't know why. The audio in general is very low on my screen um, for some reason. I don't know why, but I don't know what I can to use that, so let's just leave it. Yeah? Okay. Um, um, what I'm saying is that all the things that I do are passion, right? So I don't have to worry, how are they going to make money? How are they going to make money? And there are some people that will argue and say that you're not successful with the things that you do or the things that you're creating, um, if they're not making money, it's not. Because a lot of people rate your success with what you do according to how much money is it bringing in. Talk to any business person and they're going to tell you, well, is it making money? And if I say no, they will say, well, then it is not successful. Stop doing it. So, um, thankfully, <laughs> movies which aren't so money making, they cover themselves beautifully, which is considered huge in our world because of the high, high expense and the way we share DVD. I don't know if you know this, but you know, in our community, we share DVDs, right? Yeah. One DVD gets shared by a whole block, also by a whole bungalow colony, also by a whole extended family of ants, nieces, hundreds and hundreds of people in <laughs> one DVD, okay? And then you got the non-Jewish DVDs that are being sold in the store. You know, you live somewhere, you buy one DVD, Shoot, it's cutting out again. What's going on? So, yeah, somebody keeps trying to call me. This is the truth. If you try oh, to call somebody, that's what's happening. Yeah. That's if you try to somebody. call somebody and they don't pick up the phone, give it 10, 15 minutes before you try again. Isn't that isn't that a good idea? Oh, yeah. Right. Um, we have a few more questions. Let me just look at them. Um, like the, they sent privately. Uh. You mean if there's a way to put it on, I was afraid to put it on um, airplane mode because I understood that if you put it on airplane mode, then um, then you can't do Instagram. Am I right? Um, 
No, I know I I have I put mine on do not disturb. On what? I put my phone on do not disturb. Oh. There's like a setting do not disturb. No, but there's a private question thing. So somebody just asked what Project Proactive does. So I think I'm actually going to do a story after this. I mean, we we do have um, Shoshana is works on this with me or this project with me, and there is um, story highlights. They kind of give a background as to how it started. Um, so you could check that out. Um, so I'm not going to really say it, like, repeat it on the live. So you could check out our, the story highlights. And uh, maybe I'll do another story. So that that was the other question. What Project Proactive does. Uh-huh. But this okay. is all about you. So I want to hear more about you. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um. So... Also, I think I'm, because I'm getting totally carried away here. Oh, yeah. So what was the question again? Because this ADD brain of mine, it looks like I have it all together, but not always. What was the question? Um, well, I kind of about... asked about, like, the backlash of, uh, you know, how things progress. Oh, but no, no. Oh, you were saying that you were saying that today you were talking about, um, um, oh, that on, and on Facebook there is, there's a support, there's Kalisha, and they were talking about, things that they do and um so you oh, wanted to know no th oh right to, that you were kind of that like if 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 this is fulfilling your passion and um you, you know that it's beautiful right that you're able right to change right so i got right yeah. so i got carried away talking about yeah. how much money this movie my movies don't make <laughs> <laughs> so what i was trying to say was that um the passion that i have for what i do is what drives what what I, why I'm doing it, um, and I feel like I'm doing them for all the right reasons. And um, if there's anybody out there that wanted to do something and you didn't get a chance to, today is the day. Um, and don't listen to what anybody else has to say. And all those people out there who say that you can't do it, hold on to those people who say they can't do it because then later you're gonna have to give them a call and show them that you did it. <laughs> so. So, you know, so yeah, that's what I have to say about it. That's my take. I love it. Yeah. Um, also, um, I think that we, we spoke about this today. Um, I don't know if you want to approach this now, but we were talking about different things that we can do to get us out of or what I do. I personally have my personal things that I do when I get into a funk. Yeah, I want to hear what you do. Right. Okay. So I was thinking about them today. By the way, sorry about my my poster. It's like I tried to like shift around. <laughs> it looks a little weird that I have like two guys, but that's Rocky for anyone who doesn't. Know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm really sorry. I'm like trying to, but he Rocky's like a big inspiration to me. Um. The, the Rocky movie series. Right. And and so it looks a little weird that I'm I have like two makers. <laughs> you have some <laughs> boxing guys on your wall. What are you yeah. into? Boxing? Is that the newest it. thing you're picking up? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um so um well I'll just start by saying that I do sometimes get down. And, and it's surprising because, you know, I'm always smiling. Um, so I'm not sure how to describe what this down feels like or um, what exactly it's called because it's not really clinical, I don't think. And it's never incapacitated me to a point where I wasn't functioning. But it's disturbing because, you know, when you have an image to uphold that you're such a happy person, you definitely don't want to be caught unhappy. It's the last thing you need. I do comedy. It's a past to be caught unhappy. So normally you wouldn't even um, admit to it. You wouldn't admit that you're feeling down. You wouldn't talk about it. Um, but I, I'm very, like, like, like you said, thank you so much. I'm a very real person. It is what it is. And I want everybody to know that I, I'm, I'm human. And even happy people have down days. So I, I like to say down. I'm just feeling down. And then 
um, what do I do when I'm feeling down? So I'd love to share that. Uh, there's a few things that work for me. Of course, everybody has different things that will help them. Um, what I always say is feeling down is okay. You're sitting in your muck. You're just feeling like you're in mud. You're sitting in it. So what I like to say is, A, it's okay to be in it. It's okay to be sitting in it. But it's not okay to stay in it. Or it's not okay to be okay to stay in it. It's not okay to not make an effort of some sort. As hard as it is, it's sometimes so hard because the muck's pulling you down. You can't even reach up to, to hold on to something to get yourself out. But you need to make an effort. That's all I say. Don't think for a second it's your fault for feeling this. Don't think for a second there's a reason. There's sometimes no reason. Because sometimes I'm beating myself up and I'm saying, Malki, look at you. Beautiful family. Perfect, you know, I'm, I'm, Parnassa is comfortable. I have such a great, Baruch Hashem, so many great things going on in my life. I am doing such beautiful things that I love that keep me so fulfilled. Shame on you to be feeling like that. And so I don't let that. I don't allow it. But it'll sometimes creep in. Things like, Malky, what's wrong with you? You have no reason to be feeling down. And those thoughts are, are thoughts that I know I shouldn't have. And so I push them out. And I tell myself, there's no reason for it. No problem. We've established that what I am feeling now is not connected to anything. It's not connected to my job. It's not connected to my kids. It's not connected to anything. It's a feeling that I'm getting now because either of a hormonal imbalance, I sometimes think that it could be because of the time of the month because I get those days before or after. I'm not sure when they come because I didn't really check it out on the calendar. But I think that they sometimes have something to do with that. Um, or Asha just wants to test me a little bit. And see if I'm gonna if I'm gonna fall for it. I don't know what the reason is, but it doesn't matter because I don't get stuck on what the reason is. I work on a few things. A, make a step, something to try and get yourself out of it. Don't sit in your muck, Malky. That's A. B, this works for me every single time. It works. Change locations. You're in your house get out of the house. You're outside, go to somewhere else. You're in a store, go to a different store. You're um, in a bedroom, go to a different bedroom. Even changing the room that you're in suddenly makes a difference. And I am not sure why, and I'm sure there's a psychological explanation. I didn't hear this anywhere. I know that this works for me, and I'm not sure why. If somebody wants to expand on that, I'm sure you have your professionals that can probably expand on why if you change just even your room, even the room that you're in, you suddenly start to feel different and things kind of open up and you, you start to think differently and your thinking mode changes and I'm not sure why. We'll go there a different time. Um, also, and this is a hard one, I know it is, because the hardest thing to do when you're feeling down and not like moving at all is to move. So I feel like any physical activity that you do, um, and I'm not even going to call it exercise because that's a bad, dirty word. And I personally hate to exercise. You heard me. I'm an aerobics instructor. I'm a dance teacher. I hate to exercise. But what I don't hate is, <laughs> I don't hate is, I don't hate movement that makes me feel good or excited. Whether it's getting on a bike, whether it's getting on my skates, my four wheel skates, not the rollerblade kind like this, the four wheels kind, or whether it's, whether it's um, 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 going for a walk, even a power walk around your corner and getting fresh air. Um, or you like to play paddle ball, do you grab a friend and play paddle ball or don't grab a friend, play with yourself. You know, don't, don't, don't wait for friends and people, just do it. Um, I can think of so many things, but you yourself know which type of movement you like. So whatever it is, it will entirely transform your mood from one minute to the next, guaranteed. I'm guaranteeing this. I'm willing to bet 
I, I don't know how much money. I don't have so much money. I told you my movies don't make money. <laughs> so we can't bet so much money, but um, we, can, we can definitely bet. <laughs> like movement, like being like, you get out of your bed, walk down the stairs and open the fridge for ice, freezer for ice cream? Not that kind of movement. <laughs> I'm talking about, first I said change locations. You're talking about changing location. I'm talking about going from the steps to the bed. No, walking down the stairs is movement, no? no. And you have to walk back up after. It's like a whole big production. Shoot, your audio's cutting out. Ah, why is your audio cutting out? Whoever's Speak calling you, stop thing. calling. Ah. Hello? I love that one. She wants to know, can that be a thing? Don't be stuck in your room. Yeah. I'm going to make a post. I'm going to make a, a post for that. It, that's like the best line. But why does it, why does your screen keep freezing? Or is it No, me? it's because I keep getting calls. Oh, can everyone because... stop calling? Uh... Oh. Hold on. Let me see if there's a way to put this on. Hold on. You said there was a way to put it on private. What did you call it? Uh, do not disturb. Do not... Oh, yes. Do not disturb is on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm just scrolling back for a second. Do you think you can, your drive can ever run out? Shoot, it just froze again. Brady said Malky is very popular. Everyone wants to talk to her. <laughs> no, right now it's just my kids. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I have one more thing. Um, what was the third thing? One thing was change locations. Oh, and then here's my favorite line. And and then and then I'm not going to bore anyone anymore with this line again, even though I keep saying it because it really works. Fake it till you make it. So I'll give you an example. I'm walking on the street. I'm having a really bad day. Things are going wrong. My face looked exactly like this. Watch my face. As I'm walking down the street and I'm thinking, oh, gosh, what my face must look like right now, people seeing me, are seeing what's 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 on my face like what's and then I decided you know what I don't like to feel like this I'm going to force smile and so I did this and it felt very funny in the beginning because I seriously forced inside I was feeling like um, not so good and outside my face looked like this so the first few seconds as I'm walking down the street I'm like this is weird and after a while, I started to feel better, I promise. And so this is why I say, and I see this time and time again, fake it till you make it. Even if you're not feeling like doing something, fake it. Even though you're feel, not feeling like smiling, fake it. Do you know what laughter therapy is? I'm sure you know what laughter therapy is. Laughter therapy Yeah, we were just talking about it this morning. Okay. Laughter therapy is forced laughter. It is forced. It is so unnatural in the beginning. Oh, it's coming out. They're still calling me. I have do not disturb on. Why are they still calling? So I think that unless you change the settings, if they call you like three times in a row, it'll ring through even if, uh, even if you're on do not disturb. How is that? Okay. I don't know. Never mind. Let's move on. So, um, laughter therapy is forcing. You seriously, now, I don't know if have, many of you have been to laughter therapy, but you seriously, you have to put your hands here, like on your collarbone, and you say, ho, ho, ho. I promise. I'm not <laughs> joking. There's a few different ways. There's ho, there's he, there's ha. So you start with, I'm not sure which one, because I forgot. My friend does laughter therapy. 
If anybody wants someone to come do it, it is the cutest, most adorable thing, and it's the greatest thing to have for reunions, parties, because you think it's it's could never happen. At the end, you guys are going to be rolling and laughing so hard. So it starts like this. You say, ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. I promise you, it turns into real laughter. It starts out, you're thinking, okay, this can't be real. I started, the first time I did it, I'm looking around. I'm looking at everybody and I'm thinking, they're all crazy. We're all nuts. They're all doing it like a bunch of idiots. What's wrong with everybody? <laughs> and before I knew it, I was laughing so hard. You have no idea what a great release it is. And you, for, you force it, so you're faking it. So if whatever you did to get yourself out of your muck feels forced, it's okay. Because in the beginning, it feels forced. And then it feels natural. And then you will be so happy you did it. And then you're going to text me or call me, or send me a message on Instagram and thank me for forcing you to get out of your muck because it worked. It felt forced in the beginning, and then it worked. Okay, I'm done. I love it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm done. I think I, I, think I, I, I really um, put out there what I really wanted to say about doing a step to get yourself out of your muck. Don't beat yourself up about being in the muck either. You didn't put yourself in there. It wasn't your idea. Nobody goes into muck on purpose. So there. Well, so I one time did. I was engaged <sighs> to my husband, and I decided to go. I was crazy, but I decided to go mudsliding with one of my friends. You're talking then, about physical muck. I'm talking about, you know, I emotional. Know. Okay, okay, but, go ahead. But, yeah, no, but he thought it was absolutely crazy. He's like, I think he was like second guessing his decision. <laughs> Wait. Uh, Too um, late. But I don't know. Sometimes, you know, you got to just like let loose sometimes. Seems like you know how to do that. I try to. Um, I think. I think that um, th there was a quote by Piaget. I think that I might have posted it or maybe I didn't post it, but that you basically, uh, I forget exactly the, the quote that you have to, um, that you have to, that something about creativity and children and then you have to relearn how to be a child. Like, yeah, I, 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 I'm messing up the quote. I'll post it. Yes. But yeah, it's that fun. Brene Brown says it like there's all it's all like, you know, did you read? Yeah. Um, I can pretend to. Yeah. Um, oh, so somebody else. Oh, somebody just asked what the topic is. Uh, the topic is Malky. And her story about being authentic and using humor and um and kind of ways that she gets out of her muck that's it that's i think summer? i think i coined a new a new term don't get, get out. stuck in your muck don't stay don't stay stuck in your muck you didn't ask to be in the muck, but don't stay stuck in the muck. Stay has to be in, ca in capital letters. Don't stay in your muck. Yes, don't stay stuck in the muck, in your muck. Don't stay stuck <laughs> in your muck. Okay. I never remember that. And I'm going to make a post. Okay, so, does anyone ha have any questions before we kind of wrap things up? Does anyone have any more questions for Malky? You know, where can I get your autograph? You know, something, questions like that. <laughs> um, you can come to my house. I'll autograph anything you want. <laughs> Henny wants to know who are you? Yes, are okay. You, are you yeah, Henny's you? joking. I know Henny really well. Honey's my good friend. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she, she knows who I am. 
Um, um, if the topic was supposed to be about how I use humor, mm -hmm. right? So um, I'm always looking for things to laugh about. I look for things to laugh about. If I'll I'll be somewhere, I I'll I'll you know you know like there are people that when things are funny they're not even finding it funny because they're not in the mode of I want to laugh about this. I'm always ready to laugh. So being open to laughing about things helps a lot. Also, it makes a huge difference in how you take your things in life by just laughing about them. You could take something so so not funny <laughs> and turn it and turn it into a whole funny story. Um, so being open to making things funny, um, or being open to seeing the funny thing, the funny things and things. Um, 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 you know, also if I was going to watch anything, because I really don't really have so much time to watch, but if I was going to watch anything, I only go for the funny things. I ain't wasting my time unless I can have a really good laugh. Um, and I, I always find humor in things because sometimes it's so sad <laughs> and so terrible that the only thing you can do is laugh because this mm -hmm. has got to be hilarious. If, if, if it's so bad, it's, it's just funny. <laughs> right. The comedy um, of errors. Yes. So yeah. I'm big on that and I'm, you know, always find good reason to laugh. Um, and um, not everything about my life is so funny. And people probably want to know, are you always so funny in your house? No, I am not. I am a mother. I am mostly just normal, except for when I'm either looking to laugh or when things make me laugh. Or, But most of the time, you know, there's supper, there's kids. Sometimes it's funny. <laughs> Sometimes it's not. <laughs> well, sometimes you just have to laugh or you'll cry. Uh, exactly. If the alternative is to laugh or to cry, I just laugh. Sometimes things are going on in my house. My kids look at me. They're mortified. And I'm laughing hysterically. And they say, Ma, why are you laughing? It's not funny. And I say, yes, it is. <laughs> it's funny because it's not funny. <laughs> so... Um, you know, when all else fails, laugh. My new saying for the day. When all else fails, laugh. I gotta remember, I, have to, I should really have a pen with me so that I can like, but I'll watch it later and I'll write things down. Okay, great. Is there anything and, else uh, to think about? I don't know. I, I could spend hours. Oh, okay. The problem is that if people are watching this live tomorrow, they're going to get bored of you and I just looking at each other. <laughs> well, we can always do that eyebrow thing. Um, I'm trying to enjoy this, but it's incredibly glitchy. Aww. Uh, but uh, she wants us to know she's enjoyed. Aww. Thank you. I was Shl Shluffy is my greatest supporter. Aww. Don't go away, Schluffy. Uh, well, you know what? I, I had fun things. even though the even through the glitches. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much. Very uplifting, inspiring, and uh, I really so appreciate much for your having time. me. Um, and it is my greatest pleasure to have been able to tell everybody out there. That this funny person here that everybody thinks is always funny, I do comedy. This funny person is being brave enough to say that she is not always feeling funny. She's not always feeling happy. And she has bad days. She has down days. And not something to be embarrassed about because most of the time I didn't ask for it. I don't know how it came. I don't know what caused it. I did not do it. And so I don't need to be embarrassed about it. And so if I was able to help anybody understand that whatever you're feeling is not your fault, 
um, then it would have made a huge difference to me. Um, and yeah, it was all worth it. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. It was so nice spending time with you. Hopefully we'll do it again soon. Yes, anytime. And if there's anything like I feel like I can share with you guys, Project Proactive is such an amazing, amazing thing that you guys are starting, that you're starting. You're just so amazing that I, I want it to be bigger. I want it to be greater. And I feel like a lot of people don't know about you yet. Oh, my goodness. Why don't they know about us? It takes time for the word to get out, but I feel like it's not like the followers that you have are the only people that want to be following you. So many people don't know you exist, but as soon as they find your account, they will be on the bandwagon and it's going to, it's getting there. It's going to get there slowly. Um, and so, um, um, you guys are just amazing. We need more project proactives out there yes. to, help people realize that um, we, we're going to break the stigma in our community because, exactly. because whereas I have, I, I, people would have no problem. Even this was hard once upon a time to say uh, I had cancer. Oh, God forbid, I don't thank God, but I'm saying that was, even that is hard to say out of someone's mouth. You would never hear anyone in our community say I am depressed or I have depression. Somehow it's supposed it's it's just hard for people to admit to that. But why? Did you well, thank ask God it's becoming it's easier. yes. Yes, it's becoming easier. And and Project Proactive, you are making a huge difference in helping people realize that there's more of us. There's yes. more Yeah, a whole community of us. Yes. Yeah. And don't be afraid to talk about it. You know? Eventually, you know, like today I was walking down the streets of Bar Park without my shoes. My shoes were in my bag because um, my heels were hurting. And so as I'm walking down the street, my daughter is mortified. Ma, please put your shoes back on. I said, look, Shayfula, my feet are killing. These shoes are not hurt. They're not comfortable. Um, soon, people are going to start walking around without shoes because they saw Malky Weingarten doing it. <laughs> and then you think, oh, that's a new look. It's the tights look. Mm -hmm. It's the look where you wear tights. Mm -hmm. And the shoes aren't so important. And when you see people, you'll know that I started it. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Project Proactive, you are at the forefront. And Aww. when the day comes, when people are talking openly about it and saying to each other, hi, how are you? How's your depression doing? And they're saying, oh, I got much better. Um, and how about you? Is your anxiety better? Oh, yes, sure. I'm, I'm feeling much less anxious because I did this or I did that. That day when it comes, Project Proactive, you are going to say that you were at the forefront of it. And I'll be there to say yes. God they willing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That would yeah. be amazing. I know. So God willing, one day soon. Yeah. Um, Breezy says, I do that too. <laughs> oh, she walks around without shoes. Yeah, I hate shoes. They're overrated. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, walking down like the avenues of Borough Park without shoes and, and, and the kids are stopping and they're looking. And my daughter says, Ma, they're looking. I said, they're looking because they see that they recognize me from the movie. They didn't notice the shoes. So she says, no, Ma, they're pointing at your feet. I said, oh. So now they're going to say, Malky Weingarten, she does movies. She also doesn't wear shoes. <laughs> yeah. And it's okay. It's and fun. if Malky can talk about her depression, so can I. There you go. Mm -hmm. No shoes. Oh, stuck in the muck. Exactly. Right. Talk about well, thank it. You. Thank you so much. And, My pleasure. Uh, and I look forward to doing uh, some more work with you on breaking the stigma. Yes. I can't wait. And I will practice my eyebrows. Over and out. <laughs> <laughs>